If you're visiting Myeongdong for the first time, I'd recommend that you stop and pick up a map from one of these people wearing the red jackets, and you can ask for help finding directions wherever you want to go. They speak English, Chinese, and Korean, and I think maybe Japanese, and they're usually stationed at this intersection right in front of Boots. If you come out of the main exit at Myeongdong, which I believe is exit 6, and you just walk straight down the street for about 5 minutes, then you should see this intersection where you have boots and the people with the red jackets will be right there. Number 2. Shop for Korean beauty products. Myeongdong is basically skincare central, and just about every Korean beauty brand has a store here. The beauty store hawkers will try to lure you into their store with a free sheet mask and the nice thing about shopping for skincare products in Myeongdong is that most of the salespeople speak English and I think it's because they mostly focus on selling to foreigners. Also, they'll always want to try and cut you a deal, so you would think that because this is just a store, there should be fixed prices, but there always seem to be um, behind the scenes discounts if you buy in bulk. So my tip is to plan ahead with regard to what you want to buy here and look on reddit's asian beauty forum for product recommendations that will suit your skin type and also don't buy a ton of product that you've never tested before because you don't know how your skin will react to it number three eat street food on friday and saturday nights the street vendors line up their carts and sell some really delicious street food if you're okay with walking around and eating stuff off of a stick you can even make a meal out of this and they sell anything from lobster and scallops that are grilled in butter to a giant potato chip there's lots of meat on a stick korean rice cakes called tteok and fish cakes called odeng and on one of the back alleyways there's a couple of street food stands that are just there all the time and they sell ramen, tteokbokki, odeng, and fried mandu and I think that street food probably deserves its own video so I can actually do another video dedicated entirely to street food if you guys are interested leave a comment below if you want me to do that number four go shopping at Daiso there's an 8-story Daiso building near Myeongdong Station, and this is a great place to stop and buy cute junk for your home, Korean snacks, or even cheap souvenirs for family and friends. Korean Daiso is very different from Japanese and American Daiso, and they carry a lot of their own Korean products. And many of the Japanese products are actually marked up to double the price, which is like $2 instead of $1. Um, some of the Japanese products are priced about the same, but it's really just a completely different store. There's also another large Daiso at Express Bus Terminal that I like much more than this one, but this one is really conveniently located for those of you who are just visiting Seoul. <laughs> Number 5. Shop for Clothes if you don't have time to go to Express Bus Terminal or Gangnam Station, you can find some pretty trendy clothes at Myeongdong. And I think that the prices will probably be a little bit higher here than they will at those other two locations, maybe a 5 to $10 difference. But if your time is limited, then you can go ahead and do your clothes shopping here. Um, there's an underground mall where you can buy clothes, socks, and K-pop merchandise. There's also a lot of clothing stores on the street level if you just want to wander around. If you're into fake designer goods, um, there are some stores here that sell things like fake YSL, Anya Hindmarch, Isemiyaki, and there is a ton of fake Supreme stuff just about everywhere in Korea. But I'd actually encourage you not to buy fake designer goods in general because I believe that a lot of those things go towards supporting illegal enterprises that are linked to child labor and prostitution. But if you're okay with that, then you can find fake designer goods here in Myeongdong. Number six is visit the 7-Eleven Game Center. This is where I always play claw machines when I come to Myeongdong, and even though I feel like this place is much harder to win at than some of the other places in Seoul, uh, it's in a good location, and they also have virtual reality on the second floor, which I did, and it was really fun. And I also played archery here, which is super random, but it brought me back to my summer camp days and I actually won a prize. And in the back of the store, there's a 7-Eleven where you can buy Korean snacks and just have the whole Korean convenience store experience. Our family usually likes to stop here when we go to Myeongdong just to play a few games. Number seven is pick up some Korean snacks at Lala Mart. 
This is a store that sells a lot of different Korean snacks and one of my favorite snacks to buy in Korea are honey butter almonds. And this store carries not only honey butter almonds but a ton of other flavors like strawberry, yogurt, seaweed, caramel and pretzel and more. And they carry a lot of different flavors of almonds that I haven't seen anywhere else. They also carry other Korean snacks and it's just a great place to stock up on Korean junk food to bring back home. Number 8 is visit Artbox. This is a store in Korea where you'll find really cute character merchandise. And the Myeongdong location is three stories high and has a ton of great spots to snap a cute photo. And my favorite thing to buy here for out-of-towners and for myself are these I Love Korea pins and magnets. I think that this character is super cute, especially for friends who are getting married because they have a bride and a groom character as well as a king and a queen character and ordinary Korean folks. You can also find blind boxes here, beauty products, plushies, face masks, and other cute stuff. Number nine is buy some character socks. This is probably my number one souvenir to give to people. I don't know if these are actually licensed or not, but they have all your favorite characters like Sanrio characters, Totoro, the Disney princesses, Sailor Moon, Pokemon, and more. You can actually buy these socks everywhere in Korea, but you might as well just pick some out here because there are a ton of sock vendors and you'll have a really good selection. You can buy them both in the underground terminal and above ground on street level. The only downside of these socks is that they are basically one size fits all and where I wear women's size 8 and I think that like they're probably on the smaller side for me but they still fit. So if your foot's bigger than like an 8 then you might want to look for larger socks which you can find at other locations. Number 10 is to take a photo with the giant bear at the line store. So you can't visit Korea without checking out the line store and in Myeongdong there's usually a line to take a photo if especially if you come during peak hours but if you're also going to be in Itaewon then you can probably skip this because uh, the line store in Itaewon is much bigger and less crowded and they actually have a cafe on the third floor but um, be sure to check out the line store if you like cute stuff and you're in Seoul. Number 11 is get rose gelato from Milky Bee. If you're in Myeongdong, you have to try this gorgeous dessert. It's basically gelato shaped like a rose and you can choose between various flavors. I think they have strawberry, matcha green tea, yogurt, and chocolate. And if it's a hot day, you want to make sure to snap a quick photo and eat it before it melts. But I think in TripAdvisor or Google, it says that Milky Bee is closed and it leads you to the wrong location. But there are actually multiple Milky Bee locations in Myeongdong. So if you wander around, you'll probably run into one of them, or you can always ask those people in the red jacket um, where Milky Bee is located. Number 12 is go to the Style Nanda Hotel. Contrary to its name, the Style Nanda Hotel is not actually a hotel. It's a store that sells makeup and clothing, but it's designed to look like a hotel, and I think that it's just really well done. I love visiting this store, especially because on the top floor, they have a cafe that's called a Pink Pool Cafe, and you can enjoy drinks that cost about $9. Um, they're topped with a picture-perfect puff of cotton candy, and when the weather is good, they open up the rooftop and you can lounge on the pink and white pillows under a white umbrella and sip your very expensive drink. Um, I'll also mention that the bathroom here is pretty clean, so I like to use the bathroom here when I come to Myeongdong. Number 13, go to the Innisfree Green Cafe. Innisfree is a Korean beauty shop that has a cafe on the second and third floors, and there's actually many Innisfree locations at Myeongdong. This particular cafe is located across from the Lotte department store, if that helps. So I really like this cafe because it's calm and soothing, and it's a great place to just sit and relax and have a healthy snack or a healthy meal or even just sip a cup of tea and rest after you've been walking around in Myeongdong all day. I went on a weekday and it was pretty empty, but I, I'd imagine that it fills up quickly on weekends. And in any event, there's a ton of space and you can also do virtual reality with a Korean pop store. Um, 
when you're done eating or shop for Korean beauty products downstairs on the first floor. Number 14 is a visit Lotte department store for high-end cosmetics and duty-free shopping. This is where I came to shop for Olympic merchandise and the duty-free stuff is located I think on the ninth floor and I'll just link my Olympic video in the description box in case you guys want to check it out. But the Lotte department store carries higher-end Korean brands like Hera and Sowa suit and I know that these products are really popular on the red Asian beauty board even though I haven't tried them myself. Lotte also carries a lot of designer brands but if you're from the states you'll probably find that the prices here are much higher than what you would pay in the US. And finally, number 15 is visit Namsan Tower. If you want to visit Namsan Tower, you can get off at Myeongdong Station and walk up this hill for about 7 to 10 minutes and you'll reach the base of Namsan Tower. And from there, you can either take a cable car or climb all the way up to the top walking. So once you get to the top, you can purchase a lock for about 8 to $20 and leave it on the fence with a million other locks or you can um, if you remember, you can try to pick one up at Daiso and bring it with you along with a permanent marker to write a message on the log. You can also eat at the base of Namsan Tower. There are a handful of restaurants here and there's also a game center um, which we found to be really difficult. There's a kids amusement area and I think that there's also a Hello Kitty museum here. And then you can take the elevator up to the top of the tower and get a really nice view of Seoul. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more videos like this or if there's a specific type of video that you would like me to make that would be helpful for those of you who are visiting Korea for the first time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like this video.